So I want to thank you all for joining us for how to talk to your children about body safety. I hope that you will get as much out of this webinar as I have already in working with this incredible presenter we have with us. So now I'd like to introduce Francesca Watson. Um, she is an enthusiastic humanist with a passion for promoting the welfare of others and empowering children. She began her career in business and operations with a technology company in Miami, following receiving her bachelor's degree in business marketing. After nearly a decade of professional experience in the private sector, she transitioned her focus towards conflict resolution and social work. For the past seven years, she has gained experience in the public sector fundraising, conducting outreach, fostering community engagement, supporting children by increasing their protective factors, and helping to build stronger families. She graduated with a master's degree in 2016 and originally joined the Department of Family Services Prevention Program in the Volunteer and Partner Services Unit as an AmeriCorps VISTA, gaining additional experience in child welfare and delivering the CSAP Be Safe curriculum with the Body Safety Program. Now, as the Body Safety Program Coordinator, she has been thoroughly enjoying expanding the efforts of the program building stronger families, teaching young children about body safety, and working side by side with volunteers from all walks of life in an effort to interrupt and prevent child abuse. So thank you so much for being here with us today, Francesca. It's all yours. Thank you for having me, Erica, and thank you for that introduction. Good morning to you all. Um, as Erica mentioned, my name is Francesca. I'm the program coordinator for Body Safety, and I'll talk more about the program. Um, I am excited to be here and happy to share uh, all of this information that I think is very important for you to know, and I hope that you will find it useful. So what we will be doing today is we're going to, I'm going to talk more about the program and how you can get it in your schools, um, your children's schools or any children that you work with, take care of. Um, also some safety tips for you to know and um, share and go over with your children or any children that you work with, potential signs of abuse. And what you can do as a safe adult in the community, um, in your family, and additional resources that I think that you all will find useful. I find myself learning a new resource every day that our county has. We just have so many um, incredible resources. So I want to make sure you at least uh, get to know a few of the big ones and then also some places where you can get more of what you need. So what is the Body Safety Program? Um, it is a prevention program within the Children, Youth, and Families Division, and it's under a program called Volunteer and Partner Services. Within VPS, we connect uh, with donors, partners, volunteers in the community to help support families um, and within the division and any families that we work with. And we have other programs also that uh, support at-risk youth, including our Befriend a Child Mentoring Program and our Study Buddy Tutoring Program. So if you are, any of you are interested in volunteering and contributing in your community, we can uh, definitely connect and talk more about that. Um, so the Body Safety Program is an educational program. It focuses on building safety skills within the child. We definitely go over child abuse and the four different types of abuse, and I'll go into more detail about that later. Um, bullying, strangers, internet predators. We use the Speak Up, Be Safe curriculum that's developed by Child Help. In the past, we used Good Touch, Bad Touch, um, but for the past maybe four to five years now, we've been using Speak Up, Be Safe, both developed by Child Help. Um, they are, it's research-based, the curriculum is research-based, evidence-informed, and definitely developmentally appropriate. Um, the curriculum does go throughout high school, but um, for capacity reasons, we um, focus right now on pre-K through sixth grade. Um, so we teach at different elementary schools within the county and um, teaching uh, any of those uh, grades with children. And um, 
Because of uh, COVID and response to COVID, we've actually had the opportunity to provide virtual classes as well. So even though our program is traditionally taught in the schools, we are now offering virtual classes as well. Um, and I'll also talk a little bit more about how you can find out if this program is in your um, schools. We are focusing on our next school year and filling up that schedule. It is getting filled up, um, but we will offer the classes virtually as well, but on a more limited basis. Um, and the classes are free of cost uh, for schools, organizations, and families. Um, we also, not only with the schools, we'll teach small groups, we'll teach at community centers in the summer, um, libraries, anytime that anyone reaches out to us and is interested in um, getting this class for their children or a group of children, we are happy to help. And um, how can you bring the body safety program to your school or your children's school? Um, first, you can contact your principal or your school social worker and ask to see if it is a program that is in your school. Um, it might be something that your child is already getting, um, but um, I would assume you would know already. <laughs> but if not, you can definitely uh, talk to your principal about it, talk to your school social worker and ask them about the program, ask them to bring the program to your school. Um, because it is something that is extremely beneficial. It's a really nice complement to family life education where um, it's taught by the teachers themselves and it's a series of classes and it goes over some of this stuff that the body safety program does review, um, which makes it a nice complement, but there's other items and, and topics that um, the FLE just doesn't cover, um, which is child abuse, the different types of abuse, and um, our goal with the program Program is to build awareness around this because we know that um, internet predators or any abusers are trying to normalize this behavior. So we want to make sure children know what it is, what is okay touches, what isn't, um, and also know who to go to when they're feeling concerned or uncomfortable or confused. Um, so it is a really nice compliment to FLE within the schools. And then um, we come, we usually visit the schools, are hosted throughout the week. We'll teach all grades. And you'll get information from the school through us about what the class was, what the lessons are, what you know your children learned, but also the five safety rules, which I'll, I'll go over later, um, that you can practice with them. And you can review with them and you can continue the conversation. So each of the lessons, it's a one-time um, session that includes two lessons, and they go over specific safety concepts. Um, first, that they're special, that they deserve to be safe, that there are rules that can help them stay safe, and that adults are responsible for keeping them safe. Oftentimes, especially as the children get older, they think that they're responsible for keeping them safe. Um, we encourage them to always speak up, let their safe adults know uh, when they feel unsafe or uncomfortable, uh, and that there may be information that their safe adults don't know, so you can help them keep you safe, but, but it is ultimately adults' responsibility for keeping them safe. Um, we go over private body parts and that those are the parts of your body co covered by a bathing suit. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, how to identify and talk about different types of abuse. So each of the, we go over the f same five safety rules throughout all of the grades. Um, and ideally we would be in a school and visit the school every year so that we can go over this information um, as they develop. There's different information that we review within um, the curriculum. Uh, but essentially they learn the same five safety rules every year as we know that repetition um, helps with retention. So the five safety rules that they'll learn is the first one is it's my body. This rule focuses on the fact that their body belongs to them. It doesn't belong to anybody else and um, that they have boundaries and they set those boundaries and definitely speak up if someone crosses those boundaries. The second safety rule is to ask, a safe, ask an adult if I'm safe. And we go over in the classroom and help each child identify at least two safe adults, um, maybe somebody in the community, but also someone at home. 
And these are people that they trust, that they feel comfortable talking to, um, that will listen to them, and that they feel okay talking about things that might be confusing, um, uncomfortable, even embarrassing. We want them to know who those safe adults are, who they can go to when they feel unsafe or confused, having any of those feelings. Um, third safety rule is I have choices, and we go over different choices that children have in unsafe situations when there might not be a safe adult around. Um, we want to make sure that we empower them. We know, we let them know, give them that confidence that they still have choices if there is no safe adult around. But for safety rule, we always want them to tell someone to make sure that they go, if anything does happen, they're in a situation that's unsafe or somebody made them feel unsafe or they saw something that was unsafe. We encourage them and want them to tell someone and tell those safe adults. And for our children, it could be anyone. It could be um, a friend's uh, parent. It could be their teachers. It could be their aunt could be their parents. Um, we encourage them to have as many safe adults as they can have because we want them to tell their safe adults if something's happening to them. We have busy lives as, as parents, as professionals, um, doing so many different things. So when our children are talking to us or any child that we're working with, they may tell us something and we may not hear it. Although you would think that you would hear something, like when they're when you're talking about abuse, you would hope that you would you would hear that, recognize that. But sometimes children don't tell you directly. They're not going to tell you. They may tell you a story about something that's happening to their friend. Um, they could use different words, especially if they don't know how to talk about it themselves. Um, and you know, we are on our phones, we're on our computers, we're doing things, we're juggling multiple, multiple tasks at a time. So it could be really challenging for us to hear them. So that's why it's so important for them to have as many safe adults as possible so that they can keep on telling until someone does something about it. And the fifth safety rule, which I feel like is the most important, is that it's never their fault. If anything is happening to them, if something did happen to them, um, it is never ever their fault. And you wanna make sure that they know that. And also that they know that it's never too late to tell. So, and with each safety rule, there's a demonstration with our bodies that we do with them to help them remember. It's extremely, interactive. Um, we go over different scenarios to help them understand what they've learned. And um, we definitely talk about the four different types of abuse. So for physical abuse, we let them know it's hurting on the outside. Um, and we'll use different language as they get older, but it's when someone hurts your body on the outside on purpose. Now, we definitely go over spanking because this is something in Virginia, as we know, corporal punishment is legal. So how we present that is that some parents or caretakers, they may use physical discipline. So they may hit you um, to teach you something. But if it does leave a bruise or a mark, it could be abuse. And we use that language so that they know, like, oh, my mom hit me, that's it, it's abuse, I'm gonna go call the police. Um, we let them know that uh, with everything that we mentioned, it could be abuse, it may be abuse, but that's why it's so important to then go to your safe adults, talk about it, and um, make sure that we take care of you and, and get you in a safe situation and stop anything from happening that's harming you. Um, emotional abuse. Sometimes we don't we don't talk about this, you know, at home, and um, it, it is really important. This is hurting on the inside. When someone's hurting your feelings on purpose, it's usually a pattern, still something that's happening over and over again. Um, but it's not okay. This could be um, another child, a bully. It could be an adult. It could be someone you know and you love. And we definitely talk about the fact that people that abuse children usually are someone the child knows. It's not strangers. Um, and we talk about stranger danger, but we definitely talk about the fact that some adults make bad decisions and that they may hurt children. And it could be someone that you know, someone that you may love. Um, but it's, that's why it's so important to have those safe adults talk to them 
and make sure that uh, the abuse stops from happening. Um, and we talk about abuse with private body parts. So until they get to about fifth and sixth grade, we don't use the term even sexual. Um, it is in the slides for fifth and sixth grade, but then we revisit it as abuse with private body parts. Again, this is a curriculum that helps you use the language that they can understand. So when we talk about abuse with private body parts, we go into detail about situations when it might be okay for someone to see or touch their private body parts. This would include when they're younger, right? If they're bathing, maybe they need help changing or in a bath. Um, but as they get older, we let them know no one should be taking, no one should be touching uh, your private body parts. Um, with the exception of you may hurt your, your private body parts, you may need to go to the doctor, and your safe adult is there. Um, but otherwise, you know, no one should be seeing or touching your private body parts. No one should make you see or touch their private body parts. No one should take pictures or videos of your private body parts um, or make you look at uh, pictures or videos of private body parts. And that anything with their private body parts should never be a secret um, and definitely not a game. And anything that they feel uncomfortable about with their private body parts, they always, we encourage them to go to their safe adults. Um, and, and even if it's something that they're curious about, it, that's why it's so important to have these conversations with the children you work with or your own because we want to make sure that they feel comfortable talking about these things if they're curious but also if something's happening um, and then neglect we talk about neglect this is one of the most common forms of abuse so this is something that we definitely spend time on and this is when children are not getting the things that they need to be safe and healthy so we talk about you know that children need shelter they need food they need water um, they need sleep they need to be able to go to the doctor and um, and we go over the differences between what are things that I really need versus things that I want if you don't have a cell phone guess what, that, that's not neglect and that's okay. <laughs> Having a cell phone is a privilege. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we have scenarios within the curriculum to help them um, go over and understand what they've learned, uh, give examples. Also, uh, bullying, we talk about bullying, we talk about cyberbullying, we talk about uh, what that looks like, that it could be someone that's, uh, another child that's emotionally abusing you. Um, and online safety. Definitely go over the different safety rules that they have when they're on their phone, when they're using different apps, even in games, um, social media, any of that stuff. We want to make sure that they know some safety rules when they're online, especially going over the fact that strangers are outside uh, when we're you know, walking around, but the strangers online, they can, you know, pretend to be anyone. They can put a picture there up of anyone. So it's much, it's harder to even tell strangers online. That's why it's so important not to give out any of your personal information, never talk to anyone who's asking for it and, and speak up and tell your safe adults if someone is, or if you see anyone that might be um, being mean to somebody else or any red flags that you see you want them to to talk to a safe adult We go over personal boundaries as I mentioned with our, our first safety rule um, and uh, Secrets we talk about secrets. We talk about good secrets and bad secrets so good secrets examples Father's Day present uh, a surprise birthday party um, and go over different examples with the children because especially for the younger ones this is um, a harder concept to understand that you shouldn't um, you know you'll ask them should you ever break a promise or share a secret and they'll always say no but we want to go over and over that yes absolutely share it and and tell someone um, if it's if you or someone you know is getting hurt and then there are short animated videos at the end to reinforce what they've learned. So it is definitely highly likely that you know a child who has been or is being abused. Um, and I mentioned this uh, when we we're talking with the children, we let them know that, you know, yes, children um, do get abused by strangers, but typically it is someone that they know. Someone, it could be someone in their family, it could be someone within the community, 
um, but it, it definitely could be someone that they know. And um, children rarely lie about being abused. So that's why it's really important for them to know who to go to and for us to make sure that we're listening when children are talking to us about anything that you think might be unusual or concerning. Um, and I think the latest report was at least one in seven children have experienced abuse, child abuse and neglect just this past year. So, you know, we're, we're, we've been home, we've been isolated. For some children, they may have been left at home uh, more time with their abuser. So that's why, you know, especially as we re-enter schools and, and for some children that have already been re-entering schools, um, that we pay attention to what our children are telling us. And anything that we think might be concerning, we should be asking more questions. So some tips for you all. Um, one is if your children have taken the body safety class, you can definitely go over the different safety rules and the motions that go with it. Um, you know, for children, teaching someone helps them remember what they have learned. So you can ask them to go over those safety rules with you and um, letting your child know or any child that you're working with or around that you will support them in making the choices to stay safe, including to say no. Um, I think for a lot of, even adults, even for us sometimes if we feel unsafe, we're, we, we tend to think of being polite to someone. So if, even for children, if we're teaching them to be polite too, um, they may have a harder time saying no to someone, even if it's someone that they don't know. So if we're telling them about, you know, don't talk to strangers or even people that they know, don't, you know, uh, use your manners. Um, we want to make sure that we have that other conversation too, that, you know, their body belongs to them and to definitely speak up. And it's okay. We support them in speaking up to someone if they feel unsafe, if they're ever in an unsafe situation or somebody may be taking us in an unsafe situation. We want to make sure that they know that they can say no. Um, and encouraging them to express their feelings and opinions um, to anyone that they're around and and also with you we want to make sure that they you know let you know that if they feel uncomfortable with someone or confused about something if you're their safe adult we want to make sure that they feel comfortable talking to you and, and sharing those things with you um, and that you are open and receptive to them too. So letting them know that, you know, if they talk to you, even if it's about something that um, may be questionable, that you're still going to listen to them and you want to support them as much as you can. Um, they, uh, you know, they might tell you a story, as I mentioned, about a friend or somebody else um, that is getting abused. Children don't always share abuse directly. So we want to make sure that we are listening. And um, if they're telling us about someone they know or anything like that, we want to take the time to make sure that we let them share that story and share that information. And if they do tell us something that may be questionable or suspicious about abuse, we want to listen to what they have to say. And let them know that you take you care about your child. You want to keep them safe, um, and let the child know that they're not alone. They may be really scared and feel uncomfortable talking about it, but letting them know that it you know it's okay to share the information. That you want to keep them safe, um, and that it's your job to keep them safe, and that what's happening to them is not their fault. So other um, tips, uh, definitely consider giving your child language to refer to their private body parts. Um, research has shown that being able to name their uh, body parts accurately, including private body parts, can help the children talk ab about abuse when it's happening. Um, just to give you an example, I was uh, participating in a training and uh, the, this little girl was telling her family that this person um, kept on putting things in her purse and she didn't like it. And the family, of course, really wasn't um, taking it as seriously as, as they should have because she kept on referring to it as her purse. Well, her perpetrator had named her private body part a purse. So 
as you can see, it is extremely important to give your child, make sure that they know the names of their private body parts. Now, you know, the fear of they may say something that's maybe a little uncomfortable in public is, is that's going to happen, but that's okay. We want to make sure that they know what their private body parts are. And that way, when, if they are in any unsafe situations or something happened, you'll know right away what they're talking about and what they're sharing with you. And children are curious about their private body parts. We know this. Um, uh, definitely when they're younger, but certainly as they get older, and it's something that's expected, developmentally, um, you know, expected. Um, so, you know, it's something that maybe we feel uncomfortable talking about um, and things that happen with our private body parts, but we want to make sure our children feel comfortable talking about these things with us. So there are a lot of really good books to, uh, to read with your children and to help you use that language um, in talking about these things with your children or any children that you work with. Um, I know Erica will share that um, afterwards if she hasn't already, um, but it makes it a lot easier for us to talk about those sensitive topics uh, with the children that were around um, and any of our children. <laughs> and, um, you know, some questions maybe will, you know, talking about uh, uh, their private body parts and especially in the curriculum when we do talk about when and when it is okay and as they get older um, you know when should I stop helping my child bathe um, you know every child is different and um, you know I think that the sooner that you can empower them and teach them things to do on their own the better um, so you know Go by one developmentally, you know, typically maybe five to eight, but go by your child's uh, developmental growth and, and, you know, kind of determine when do you think it's okay. And the moment that they say, hey, you know, they want to do it on their own or maybe they need a little bit of privacy, follow their lead. Um, and, and, you know, that, that's something that, you know, you can continue talking about too, especially as you get older. How often do I talk about this stuff? Um, you know, it's, it's important information to go over with your children or the children that you work with. So we're in the schools every year, um, but it's not to say if there's a situation, certainly bring it back up. You can use those safety rules that they learned, apply the safety rules. Um, but, you know, continuing on the conversation as they reach milestones, as they get older, um, you know, they're going to develop. So it's important to continue to have these conversations um, that are developmentally appropriate as they get older. Um, and use the language right from the program, as I mentioned. So, you know, if they do take the class or we can certainly talk about how to schedule a, a virtual class for them afterwards. Um, but um, it's good to use okay well what safety rule would you would you have applied in this situation if they tell you about a situation or let's say they run off in a in a crowd at the at the store or something you know talk to them remind them about the safety rules break up um and definitely encourage them to talk to you whenever they feel um they're asking themselves do i feel safe and um another really important tip is to review your personal information with them. You know, you may ask a child, okay, what's your mom's name? And they're gonna tell you mom. <laughs> but if you are ever separated with your child, um, they're gonna need to know your information. So what's your mom's, you know, full name? What's one of your safe adults' full name? Their real name and their full name. So that they, if they're separated, they're gonna give you that information. Also, your phone number. Right. Try to memorize at least one of your safe adults phone numbers. Um, put that write that information down on the refrigerator. Review it with them. Help them memorize it. Some children are like, oh, no, I have it in my phone. But, you know, phones can die. Um, they you may not be on you when you're in an unsafe situation. So you want to make sure that they know that information and have it memorized. And then if your child has taken the body safety class or, you know, we can schedule one, um, make sure you review those safety rules with them often because, again, re repetition is, is definitely really important. So what are some things to look out for, some potential signs of abuse? Um, 
you know, a lot of times it's it's not something that parents just are making bad choices. It's they have reached a point when they um, are are just overburdened, overwhelmed. They you know can't handle certain things. They've gotten to a point where they're just not able to handle so many things, um, and it could happen to anyone. But that's why we want to make sure we get in there and help any families that may get to that point before that point, really, um, so that we can get families connected to resources and we can make sure that they don't get to that point where they're overwhelmed or overburdened and then may end up hurting any children. Um, so, but if they are, you know, appearing overwhelmed, they're threatening physical harm, um, or making hurtful remarks to their children, we definitely want to make sure that we get connected with that family, get them the resources that they need, um, and make things a little bit easier so they don't end up, um, you know, in a situation where they have reached too much and use the, make a bad decision in, in what they're doing with their children. Physical appearance of children. Um, any unexplained concerning bruises or marks. Um, you know, sometimes it may be a family member was doing something and they had to, you know, use force to protect their child. Um, but if you're seeing anything that's suspicious, um, then that's when you want to definitely notify us. You want to speak up and, and do something about it. Um, you know, anything that you think may be suspicious that you look, that looks like it's something, a, a bruise, a mark, a, a burn, a welt, something on a child that does look suspicious. Um, or if the child appears malnourished or unkept, um, certainly the child's behavior. This is something that you can notice maybe um, unexplainable or, or looking at the pattern of the child and their big pattern of patterns of behavior, um, a sudden change in mood or lack of engagement or crying uncontrollably, um, or they, they seem really withdrawn or isolated or, or fearful. Um, if they all of a sudden started using drugs or alcohol or anything like that, we want to make sure that we um, find out a little bit more information and definitely contact us if, um, if, if need be. Um, their environment, if there's safety hazards at home, if you're able to see that in any way, um, exposed wires, uh, you know, spoiled food, any hazardous material. Um, and definitely lack of food or anything like that. I uh, want to make sure that we know about it um, and could be a, a, a definite sign of abuse. Supervision. So this is definitely um, a, a, a challenging one for some families, um, but also, you know, you want to keep uh, cultural aspects in mind. Um, and think about different families, where they're coming from. Um, so in Virginia, we don't have any laws about uh, supervision. However, we do have guidelines. And this is something that we definitely share with families. If there is a little bit of a concern, maybe it wasn't necessarily necessary to get in contact and make a report um, to Child Protective Services, but it was concerning. So we wanted to provide that information to families. Um, because even, you know, anyone could ask, well, when is it okay for my child to be left home alone? And we'll be sure to share that um, information with you, that resource, so you can see that. Um, want to make sure that they, um, you know, but if you do notice, let's say a child, especially under the age of eight, um, is, you know, answering the phone or you're in a virtual classroom and they're, they're doing things all by themselves. Um, there's no, uh, you know, adults at all. Um, now this could be, let's say you're in a situation where a, a child says, you know, I'm, I'm, my parents, you know, work all day. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean, okay, you may think there's no one there taking care of them, but they could have another safe adult in the next room. So that's why it's really important to kind of ask more information, get more information from them. Um, and then you can, uh, you know, as you gather that information, you can then make a report if you feel like it's something that you need to do. So what can you do as a safe adult? You can definitely talk to the child, let the child know you want to, um, you want them to talk to you, you'll listen to them. Um, 
It's okay to be uncomfortable talking about sensitive subjects, even if it's embarrassing, you know, you're there for them, you're going to listen to them. Um, and if they're in an unsafe situation, you're going to do something about it because, again, it's, it's your job. You're their safe adult, and it's adult's job to keep children safe. You're going to want to pay attention and ask more questions. Um, if something doesn't seem right, you know, find out more information. Ask more questions. And, you know, I think some people have a concern of, like, well, what do I ask? If you just think who, what, when, where, and how. You definitely don't want to ask any leading questions, but just try and get more information, as much information as you can with those who, what, when, where, and how um, questions. And follow up. Definitely, if they share something, you know, ask them to tell you more about it. Um, well, what happened then? You know, anything that you can get as much information from them. If a child um, does, tell you something or, or, or uh, disclose abuse to you, you want to definitely stay calm. Ask those questions, who, what, when, where, and how. Remember, it's not your job to substantiate any abuse or investigate. Um, definitely want to avoid any leading questions and explore any concerns. And don't make any assumptions. Um, and I'll talk more about what to do when you do feel like you want to report uh, child abuse or neglect um, and what information you'll need. And you definitely want to praise your child for telling you anything, especially if you can tell it's uncomfortable. Praise them. Uh, reward them. Let them know that if you are so happy that they told you and that they can, you're always going to be there for them to tell you those things. Um, and also make sure you let them know that some stuff, if somebody's hurting you, you, you are you're going to have to say something about it. Not everything that they may tell you, you're going to be able to keep a secret or between you and them, but you can always use that language and say, because it's my, my job as your safe adult to keep you safe. So if somebody is hurting you, I am going to have to say something and do something about it. Um, and work on your safety network. You know, talk to your um, family, talk to your community members, let them know, okay, you know what, you're going to be my child's safe adult. They mentioned you, they said that they were really comfortable talking to you, you know, I trust and feel confident with you, um, and let them know what they can do as your child's safe adult or any child that you're working with. Um, so if you do have any suspicions of child abuse or neglect or a child discloses something to you, you're going to want to call the Child Protective Services hotline. We also have an online portal that you can go, and I know Erica will um, share that, um, but you can call or you can go online and submit a report. Um, abuse doesn't happen 9 to 5, so it is a 24-hour hotline. And um, you can definitely call, make that report, and you're going to want to if there's any suspicions. Um, and I think that there is a lot of um, a lot of different assumptions about what Child Protective Services does and what what we do. Um, and um, what I want you all to think of is that we definitely want to uh, keep children at home, connected and stay with their families. Our job, we don't want to go in there and take the children away. We want the child to be safe um, and make sure that they are in a healthy and safe environment, but we want to keep them with their family. Um, so what we do is we help connect them to the resources that they need to stay together. We build on their strengths. We want to help increase their protective factors. Um, we definitely don't want to rip children away from their families or their home. So that's what we'll be doing. And, and that's what you can be confident of is, is kind of looking at it in a different way and thinking of us as, um, uh, you know, staff and, and a department that wants to help families and help um, ensure the safety and well-being of children and build on their strengths and the family strengths. Um, if there's a child that you think is in immediate danger or under the age of seven and unsupervised, definitely call 911 for an immediate response. Um, and, you know, 
remembering that there are those supervision guidelines out there um, and also that some families don't know you know that it, it could be something that they're very used to in certain countries um, where it may be completely acceptable um, for their older siblings or older children to be taking care of maybe their babies but it's really important for our families to know here in our community um, what those supervision guidelines are and what we suggest so how do you make a report? Um, what information do you need? You're going to need to provide the child's name, address, and age, the parent's name and address, and reasons for making the report. And then what information is helpful? The alleged abuser's name and any of those signs that we talked about that you've observed, um, and definitely whatever the child has disclosed to you. Um, as the best as you know verbatim as you can from what they shared with you um, and you know some stuff you may not have this information you may be thinking oh okay maybe I, I shouldn't make a report but we collect this information so let's say maybe it didn't get screened in maybe we're not going to send um, a practitioner out there and investigate that's okay it will be collected in our database that we use um, more so that if something happens again, it's going to be on our radar. We're going to have that information already in there and we're going to know. So even if you don't have everything and perhaps it didn't um, get screened in, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't call for any suspicions um, of child abuse. And then resources. So for our virtual classes, I don't think I went into more details about that, but we have, so in the schools, we um, are asked to be hosted at a school. Typically, um, our body safety classes are about an hour and a half to two hours with a break in between. It's just the one session and we deliver the curriculum to all the grades in that elementary school. Parents and families will get uh, parent information sheets with five safety rules that we'll go over that the children will learn. And um, they'll also uh, get additional tips and talking points to continue the conversation with their children. Um, we will also provide the video at the end. And then for our virtual classes, we can provide these to any children um, that reside in Fairfax County. Um, and for those uh, that are interested in a virtual class, we are offering them right now uh, individually to any child, um, that uh, any parent or caregiver, if you want to give me a call, email, go on our website, anything like that, please do and get in contact with me and we can schedule a virtual class. They are typically held on Zoom, um, but we're open and flexible with platforms used. They're typically about 45 to minutes to an hour, depending on their grade. Um, so for in-person classes, for the younger ones, they're half the time, and that is the same for our virtual classes. Um, and all of our classes are taught by myself and are trained and certified facilitators. And for our virtual classes, you'll also receive a parent information sheet, a list of those books, and um, the five safety rules that your children will learn. And again, free of cost, available to any children that reside in Fairfax County. Um, so there's my number there on the screen, my email. Um, if you need to make a report, there's our CPS hotline number. Um, also, I know Erica already shared our mandated reporter tip sheet. Um, if you are a mandated reporter or just interested, we uh, at DFS, the Department of Family Services, had developed a, a really helpful tip sheet going over some of those things that I already reviewed um, as far as questions and information to get from your children, but also what you'll need to make that report. And then our supervision guidelines. We have a parent support line that you can call. Let's say you are in need of something and are looking for any type of resource. Uh, if you call our parent support line, they will be happy to help you and get you connected with the resources that you're in need of. As I mentioned, we have a, a number of resources in the county, um, more so than I can even keep track of. Um, so I'm sure if there's something that you need, we can connect you with it. 
Um, if you're in a situation you feel like might be safe uh, with your partner or whomever is in your house, we have uh, our domestic and sexual violence um, uh, advocate center and there's a hotline there that's 24 hours also that you can get in contact with. If you're in need of childcare, maybe feeling like there's a, a financial burden, we offer childcare assistance. So we have a program where you can submit a referral for that. Um, and there's their phone number also. And um, any other housing, medical, employment questions or resources in need of, you can get in contact with our self-sufficiency department or in general DFS. Um, and there's our, our general number there. Um, if you want to stay connected with us or you know want to learn more about the resources we have, definitely we're on Facebook. Um, just found out recently we're on LinkedIn. So they, uh, we are on, have social media pages that you can get connected with. There's a lot of resources. Um, so I encourage you to get on there and like our page. Um, and then also I often use this with the families I work with. Um, and I, I know a lot of my coworkers do. It's uh, uh, called uh, Snapshot, and it is a resource guide that's pages and pages um, of a lot of different resources. And it has a nice uh, table of contents to really get you directed and guided to where you need to go, what information you need. Um, and definitely you can go on our website, fairfaxcounty.gov, and, and search for the Department of Family Services. Um, and look for any resources that you're in need of. Um, so what we talked about today, we went over um, the body safety program. Um, and again, if you are interested in um, having that program at your child's school, you can definitely reach out to me, but talk to your principal and social worker. If you want a uh, virtual class for your child, you can definitely reach out to me and we can schedule that. Um, the classes right now are taught in English and in Spanish. So if you have a Spanish speaking child that you're working with or you have, um, we can definitely teach, uh, provide them the body safety class also. Um, and we went over our tips and potential signs of abuse what you can do as a safe adult, and resources. So let's go ahead and take a look at the questions. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you. We have now opened up the chat for questions, and we would love to hear about those. As you're considering um, what you'd like to ask about, I know, Francesca, you had shared with me a story about a purse. Um, that I think might be helpful for our families to hear. Yes, so I did mention it a little bit, but um, yes, thank you for bringing it up. I um, was at a training, and, um, and, and this is in reference to how important it is to talk to your children about their specific private body parts and what they are. Um, this little girl uh, kept on telling her family, her parents, that um, this person kept on sticking things in her purse and she didn't like it. Her parents did not really take it, you know, as serious as they needed to because they did not realize what she was talking about. She did not know the specific names of her private body parts and her perpetrator was calling her private body part a purse. So again, why it's so important to make sure you give children the specific anatomical names for their private body parts so that not only they can share things with you about maybe the curiosities and things that they have going on in their mind, but also if somebody is doing something to any one of their private body parts, you're going to know exactly what they're talking about. Thank you. Um, that story is so powerful. Um, Valerie yes. wants to know, do we have to have a certain number of kids gathered to request a virtual body safety class at home? That's a great question. So um, you don't. It, right now our virtual classes are on an individual basis. Um, 
because uh, just because of COVID right now, we found it a little bit easier, um, not to say that we haven't provided virtual uh, classes for a classroom, um, but if you have a child at home that you would like the body safety class for, certainly you can reach out to me and we can get that scheduled. Great. And um, since your book list is so comprehensive and there are so many options, do you have any favorites that you want to highlight for our family? Um, well, to be honest, I, one of my favorites um, as, a, as a younger girl, even for myself, because it's still a classic, I was surprised it was even on the list, but Where Did I Come From is a really good one to begin the conversation, understanding even um, what sex is. Um, it, it just is a, a, a great way to even start talking about these sensitive things and these topics that are so hard for us to talk about with our children. And I want to take a moment to note that many of these books are available in our Parent Resource Center and you're welcome to check them out. We'll be adding more um, thanks to Francesca's recommendations. Um, so please do let us know if we can connect you with those. Another question came in, what age do you recommend that parents can start a conversation about sex ed? So sexual education is, is very broad. Um, what I would suggest is definitely start having conversations, conversations with your children about body safety. Um, as, as, as they start to become curious and demonstrate anything. Um, we teach the, start teaching this class at four years old uh, to preschoolers. So you can see that, you know, that's when we even begin to talk about um, private body parts. Now I know FLE definitely goes into sexual education and we'll start to talk about that more as they get older. But I think talking to them about body safety in general, um, as soon as you can, um, as they're developmentally appropriate and, and you know where you're feeling that they're developmentally at that age um, you know start talking to them about it this is an important one as a safe adult do we need to conduct fact finding by confronting potential abuser is or is that a no-no so again what I would suggest as a safe adult is if you your child or whichever child that you're working with or is disclosing to you get as much information from that child as they tell you um, it's not your job to investigate it's not your job to determine whether it is abuse or not so I definitely would not um, suggest talking to the abuser. I would suggest if a child discloses to you in any way and tells you anything suspicious, ask more questions. Avoid leading questions, follow that who, what, when, where, and how, and then make a report. Another question, is there an age where siblings need to be separated because of being different sexes? Well, the kids come to that on their own. I have an eight and nine year old and they likely will be in the bathroom together to chat while the other one is in the shower. Is that okay? So I would follow your children's lead. Um, you know, if you start to feel uncomfortable about it yourself, then you may say, okay, one rule in our house is we definitely don't close doors. If you're in the bathroom by yourself, um, and you know you're doing anything with your private body parts then okay close the door but otherwise if you're with anyone even a friend you know there should be no closed doors um, but definitely follow their lead also they're gonna want to have their privacy too but they're also gonna be curious so you know I think it's important to talk about those things and create those rules and then also even have those rules visible where everyone can see them and work on them together you know, as a family, and then post them up on the fridge or something. And we have time for more questions if anyone has them, but I'd also like to ask, what advice might you have for parents who maybe feel a little embarrassed um, or unsure of how to approach these topics with their kids? 
So it's it's definitely a hard topic to talk about, especially if you haven't started talking about it at a younger age with your children. Um, so I would encourage you to at least get any one of those books and start there if you're feeling uncomfortable talking about it. But I also would encourage you to um, get connected with our program to start to use the language that's in there because it's already, you know, the research has already been done. We know it's developmentally appropriate and it'll give you those words to use to talk to your children about it. It's not something that you wanna avoid talking about or think, okay, they're gonna learn this in school. We wanna make sure it's our responsibility as community members to keep our children safe. So we wanna make sure, especially as parents, um, but as safe adults, that we have these conversations with our children, even if they're hard to talk about. Um, but that's why you know we have those books out there that you can use, um, the body safety program, um, and, and also, you know, go slowly with your child at your own pace that you feel comfortable, but you definitely want to have those conversations. And then lastly, if we have a child who's already experienced something, um, what advice might you um, want to leave with our families and caregivers today? Absolutely. So um, first and foremost, you want to make sure that you reassure that child that it is not their fault that that happened to them. You want to praise them for sharing that information with you. Make sure that you let them know how brave they are, um, that you support them. You want to make sure that they feel supported by you, that they did the right thing. Um, and it may be hard for some families. I know that um, one family it could be a, a, a relative and that may be extremely challenging for the family as a whole. Um, so making sure that that child knows that you fully support them, um, that it's definitely not their fault and definitely get any get connected with any resources that you can. There's a lot of resources for counseling and support, not only for the children that have experienced any abuse, but also for the parents and caregivers, because it's it's hard for everyone. It's traumatic for everyone, and it's a hard thing to overcome. But we want to make sure that you have all the tools and support you need, but so does your child or, or the child that you're working with. I want to thank you, Francesca, for being with us this morning. I want to thank each of our participants for joining us for this incredibly important topic. And I hope that you have walked away learning as much as I have, appreciating the resources that we have available to us. And I do hope that you will reach out to Francesca on the Body Safety Program. Also, please know that we are here to support you in any way we can at the PRC. Thank you all. We will be sending out the presentation materials as well as a link to the recording of this webinar when it is available to us sometime next week. And we hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.